Butters. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a butter dish. We're, pro we're calling this project Butter is Best because obviously. Um, first of all, the clay that you're going to use is buff clay. It's found back in the back room behind um, the kiln. So to start this project, um, at least the first person needs to get out a bag of clay, um, a brand new bag of clay. We're going to open it up and we're going to open it all the way up. Now, multiple people can use this one um, block of clay. I want you to take a wire tool. Beginners, this is what a wire tool is. I like to wrap it around my fingers. And then I'm going to try to cut somewhat of an even slab, uh, about a half an inch to an inch. Uh, it varies on this one, um, in thickness, okay? So again, you want to cut it the long way. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to hold it or put it up like this and then cut a super small slab, okay? So once you have your slab um, done, you're going to go get a piece of canvas. So follow me over to the canvas. In this big cabinet, you're going to find a lot of supplies. Um, but down here, we just have loose canvas. So you're going to grab one of these and then come over to the slab roll. At the slab roller, um, you're just going to set this slab down for a second, and you're going to take this piece of canvas. Okay, so the slab roller first needs to have this thicker canvas that always stays on it. Um, if you can see right here, um, there's a little like kind of cheat to show you to put your slab in this way, not this way. Okay, so I'm going to take my little canvas here, and I'm going to line it up, and I'm going to try to make sure there's no wrinkles in it. If you get a wrinkle in it, it'll cut your slab and then you'll have to redo it. So you do want to spend time. You want to make sure that this um, canvas isn't hanging off the edge. Um, and then put whatever side you accidentally cut thinner towards the roller. So I'm going to put this all the way up at the front. You see I have that thinner side there. Um, now I'm going to flip this top canvas over. And again, I'm going to make sure that all these canvases are lined up. I have the base canvas, my canvas, and then the top canvas. Um, this lab roller is adjustable. Um, for this project, um, we're going to do a fourth of an inch um, for the thickness. But I would always double check it just in case somebody has changed it. So I'm going to look here to make sure it's on a fourth of an inch. If you need to adjust it, you can use these dials. And also on this side, it needs to be adjusted to a fourth of an inch. So once you have that set up, um, you kind of have to pull these canvases a little bit to get this started. So I'm just going to yank a little bit on that side. And then you take, oh, you don't do that. You take um, this lever and you start turning. And once you get it started, it will go on its own. It does take a little bit of muscle. It's, it's nice to have somebody. So once you have your slab rolled out, you're going to lift up this top canvas and you can see your slab is ready to go here. Now the reason we put it on that canvas is so that when you're done rolling your slab out, you instead of picking up the canvas or picking up the slab, you can pick up your canvas and transport it to your table. So I'm going to go over to my seat here and put it down. And then I'll show you uh, the rest uh, in a few seconds. Thanks. All right, on for the next step. So I rolled out my slab. Um, I've transferred it to the table. Um, and you'll notice when you roll your slab out that you're gonna have some texture from um, the canvas, from the slab roller. Um, this is called a metal rib. And we have some that have like, like teeth on them and then some that are smooth. For this part, you wanna find one that's smooth. And these are found over um, with the rest of the tools. You're gonna take this metal rib and you're gonna kind of pet the clay so you don't want to hold it you don't want to scratch or scrape the clay you just want to pet the clay and that will smooth out that texture now at some point you may decide you want to keep that texture i'm going to go in two different directions here and i'm going to smooth that out i don't know if you can see here i did have a wrinkle in my um, canvas and so i'm going to avoid this part because I know that it's thinner there and that it'll be weak. But I think this slab is big enough that we'll be okay. Okay, 
So I also, or we also have um, these tools to play around with um, texture. So obviously you just roll this one on, um, this comes off, you can put this one on, or you can also just roll it like this. I have these personal tools that are awesome um, that I'm more than happy to share with you. So for your butter is best um, butter dish, um, you are going to um, play around with texture. So um, right now, huh, I'm just, I'm just gonna kind of wing it. You can kind of plan this out a little bit more, but I'm taking this, rolling it. Um, some of these you can do repeated. You can get really creative with this part. You can even add your own texture, like if you find something at home um, that has a cool texture, you could bring that in. Um, I'm just gonna kind of do a lot of them here just to show you. This one's cool, it's little stars, so you put it in your finger like that and roll it. This might be a little too busy, but for the demo, you get the idea. Ooh, I love this one too. So I'm gonna do that one going along these. Okay, so I've done my texture. Um, you could also, you know, just get a tool and create some of your own textures. Really, there are no limits here. As long as you're exploring texture. Okay. Um, now, I have made these tin plates for you. Um, so you're either going to have to get a new one and cut it out or... I'm sure we can probably reuse some of these. You're gonna lay your tin plate down. Preferably don't lay it in the middle because then you can't use the rest of the slab. So do your texture on one of the sides. I'm gonna lay that down and I'm gonna take a metal knife and without moving this around, the metal knife, see it? the metal knife is straight up and down. Those are the cuts I'm gonna make. You don't want to have it at an angle so that you make beveled cuts. You want a straight up and down cut. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to be very careful to follow this template. Don't let the template move around on you. Sound effects help. I'm not pressing on this because I don't want to mess up that cool texture I just made. I'm just kind of holding it in place. Okay, one more cut here. Like so. And then I can just um, get rid of those scraps. Um, I recommend Forgot to cut that little part. So roll up these scraps. As long as they're still nice and wet, you can put them um, back by the wedging table in the bin um, labeled buff clay and they can be reused with the throwers. Um, so here we go. I'm gonna take my tin plate off and this is what it looks like. I'm actually gonna leave this here um, uh, for a second uh, so that it can dry. Okay, so moving on to the next step, is we have the top of the butter dish cut out, and now we need to do the bottom. So I'm actually gonna line this up right against that line I already cut. It's one less line I'll have to, to do. Um, I am choosing to do texture um, on the bottom part of the dish. Um, that is up to you. And I'm gonna cut that bottom part out. Then I'm going to find a board. You're gonna use um, one of these square boards. This, this is the, the larger of the two. And I'm going to very carefully, without bending this a lot, I wanna keep this as flat as possible. I'm gonna bring this top part up and put it on my board. And then I'm gonna bring this bottom part over and put it on my board. 
Now I have um, kind of this mold here that you can use um, for the bottom dish. Let's see if that's gonna work. Um, I want you to put this side down because I've beveled the edges a little bit. So while your clay is still pretty wet, you're gonna line this up and then I'm just gonna start pushing down here. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna make that indent for your dish to fit into, like the plate. Mm, that'd be a good idea to like, nope, that's not a good idea. I'm gonna grab a roller. Hold on. Could grab one of these brayers, kind of rub that or roll that over that. Let's see what happens here. So um, you can see now I have my indent for my plate. I would have liked it to be a little bit deeper, um, so that's something I'll work on um, refining in the future. Okay, so on to um, constructing your butter dish. Now it's best to like touch your your clay at the least amount of possible. So even though I have like some kind of dopey areas here, I'm just gonna leave it alone. It'll be much easier to clean it up um, once your clay dries a little bit. So please don't spend time smoothing all this out at this stage. Um, okay, so here we go. I'm gonna carefully lift this up. I'm again, trying not to bend it too much yet until right now. <laughs> and just gonna kind of start forming it here. Now you have um, little flaps here. So I'm gonna choose to put my long side in like so. And kind of imagine what a butter dish looks like. You could leave this rounded. I'm gonna tap mine down a little bit. And again, I'm making sure that these are nice and straight, okay? Um, and then I have these two flaps on the outside. Um, I am, how am I gonna do this? I'm going to, and this will this will vary for everybody. I'm going to uh, cut some of my flap off here. So once I have it in position, I'm not cutting too much off, just a little bit. You could also choose to fold that over. That will be um, all up to you as the artist. Um, okay, so now I need to slip and score these together. When I'm slipping and scoring, and this is going to be kind of tricky, I'm going to lift this flap up. Um, I'm going to score. This is a needle tool. And when you score, you want to make kind of deep scratch marks. Not like chicken scratches. You want to kind of really dig in there. On both sides. Oh, sorry, that's not where I'm scoring that. So I'm scoring here, and then I'm scoring here. This is how you um, put together two pieces of clay. So I have some slip here. Um, slip is just watered down clay. We usually get it from the bottom of your throwing bucket. And I'm just brushing on a little bit of slip. I don't want it to be really sloppy. Um, so just a little bit of slip. And then I'm gonna gently work those two pieces of clay together. Now, I'm not gonna worry about this right now. It looks a little sloppy. But again, I wanna wait until it's more leather hard, that it's drier, to work on that. Um, so that is called slipping and scoring. That is how you join two pieces to clay, of clay together anytime, um, is by making the marks, um, scoring, and then using slip. I'm gonna do this on all four edges, and uh, then I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back to uh, explain uh, slipping and scoring in a little um, more detail. So let's say I have this piece of clay and I want to stick it there. Now, you could stick it there like this and it's gonna hold until it dries. Once it dries, it's gonna pop right off and all your work um, will, will be um, not work. So what I'm gonna do is in order to put this here, I'm just gonna lightly put it there. I'm gonna trace where those two um, pieces of clay are gonna touch and then I'm gonna score it. This is scoring. Now when you're scoring, you wanna go pretty deep. You, you, know, you don't wanna go all the way through your slab, but 
a little bit less than halfway. You don't want to do teeny tiny chicken scratches. We call these chicken scratches. That will not hold. So I scored that part. I'm going to score this part. I'm going to use my slip, which is the watered down clay. Not a lot. You don't want it to be all gushing out and, and all wet. Okay, so I'm going to slip both of those areas and then I'm going to score it again, going in the opposite direction. Now what you're doing there is imagine that this is one surface of clay and this is one sur surface of clay. By scoring it, I open up that surface and open up this surface. Boop. By scoring it, I open up those surfaces. That way now I'm gonna work those surfaces into each other so that they become one piece of clay and they have a nice strong bolt, um, hold. So you do that by firmly pushing down you don't want to squeeze this really hard so that you're um, changing the thickness of your slab, but you really need to work those two pieces of clay together. Um, if it's possible, it's nice to be able to lift it up and kind of push from the other side, okay? So, um, and, and then all this stuff can be cleaned up once it's uh, leather hard, which means a little bit drier um, than it is right now. So now I want to think about um, a handle. You don't have to put a handle on. I think um, they work pretty good for just holding them like this. But if you want to um, put a handle on, think about proportion. So let's say I just cut this piece of clay out. That might be a little too big and a little too heavy um, for this design. So I'm going to cut this down. And this is still from the same slab I started with. And make it a little bit thinner. Uh, I still think it's a little too tall so there you go I think that looks pretty good proportionally now you could play around with this maybe you're gonna put it this way um, you can get super creative with this um, I'm just gonna uh, bend it how I want it and set it here to the side I will attach it later um, once these get leather hard all right so um, now uh, the butter dish is leather hard what leather hard means is the, the, there's still water or moisture in the clay and it's cold to touch, but you can't bend it anymore. If you do bend, bend this, it's gonna break. Um, so again, I didn't fuss with any smoothing anything out until it got leather hard. Um, so now you can see I can handle this. You can also tell it's leather hard when it's still cold to touch, but your fingerprints um, don't show up in it. Um, and I did that by uh, laying it in front of the fan on level one. Um, it's probably been in front of the fan for probably a good hour or so. So this might be something um, that you have to do one day and then um, like let it get leather hard one day and then work on it the next day. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of trim up these corners um, and fix just the craftsmanship. And you can see now I can cut this really easily. It comes off nice and clean. Um, so I'm going to work on those corners. Also, inside here you can see um, the joints. We have these tools, they're kind of like paint brushes, but they have this like rubber tip. And they work really good for getting into corners where you can't get your fingers into. So this is what the corner looks like before I did that. And then I just smoothed it out and see there it's nice and seamless. So I'm going to work on doing that. Um, I'm also going to take a damp sponge, not a really wet sponge, um, and a little container of water. Again, I don't want it really wet, like all the water should be dripped out. And I'm just going to go over my edges. In ceramics, we don't want any sharp edges because those tend to chip um, once it's been fired. So again, for craftsmanship purposes um, and, and functionality, really, I'm going to go over all these edges to make sure there's no sharp edges. Um, so those are things that I'm gonna work on. Um, I did flip the plate side, um, uh, let it dry on both sides um, so the underside could get um, dry. So I'll work on cleaning up those edges too. Um, I'm also going to, well, I don't know. I may, I may slip and square this on. Um, I haven't quite decided if I want a handle on here, so we'll see. Um, so I'm gonna take a little break here and work on those things. Um, and then I will be back in a few minutes. Oh wait, let me show you one other thing. Um, this is called a paddle. Um, and you can use this 
Um, let's say you want to change the shape a little bit. You can kind of clean angles up by paddling your piece. Um, so that's another way to kind of change the shape once it's in leather hard state um, and really get it uh, nice angles. Um, all right, I will be back in a few. Okay, so I just realized that I did all this work and I should have done a time-lapse video of it because uh, you missed it all. Um, so uh, I will keep that in mind for uh, the next time. Anyways, um, I went over all the edges, so I have no sharp edges. Um, I cleaned up the inside. I, I definitely had to fuss a lot with the plate um, to make sure that my um, the top fits in there. And let me show you some things I did. One, I used this to try to get that to go down more. Um, I also put it on there and kind of drew an outline so I could see um, where I needed to push down more. I eventually just used my fingers and kind of went along here. Um, it's not that best, it's not the best fit. Um, so again, that's something that I will work on um, refining and improving um, for my next soap dishes. So once you have it um, totally done um, and constructed, um, I do recommend uh, putting a piece of plastic lightly over it um, until the next class so that it can lightly or slowly dry. Um, when you slip and score things, if you dry them too quickly, um, your, your joints will crack, crack apart. So again, lightly cover it with a piece of plastic. Don't forget to put your name and block number um, on your piece of plastic. Um, but before you do that, um, you're gonna take your mark. Um, this is not my mark, I'm just doing this for demo's sake. And decide where you're going to mark it and sign it. Uh, for this, I'm going to pretend like I'm going to mark it right here, like so. And then I'm going to get, um, I prefer to use a, a wooden skewer. Um, I don't have one right here by me, so I'll use this. And I'm going to sign my name in there. Um, so again, you're going to mark it with your potter's mark and sign it. Um, cover it lightly with plastic. Let it dry until the next class, um, lightly with plastic. Then you can uncover it take it off of your board and my new year's will be a little bit more dry take it off of your board and put it together and put it back in the back room on the shelf labeled to be bisque it will go through one firing um, which is called the bisque firing um, once it gets out of the bisque firing uh, i'll show you how to add underglaze um, we'll fire it again with the underglaze on it when it comes out from that firing, then I'll show you how to put clear glaze on it. Um, and then we'll fire it one more time and it'll be done. Um, my goal is for these to be totally, completely done and ready to take home. Mm, maybe by Thanksgiving would be awesome. Um, so you could use it at Thanksgiving, um, if not by winter break. So there you have it. Um, butter is best. Have fun. <laughs>